Good afternoon, Jugger fans, and welcome to the Mile High Open 2021. I'm your host, Sebastian Seabass Wolf, and I am so excited to get into day two bracket play. This tournament is for the entire North American Championship as all eight teams compete to see who is on top. Phoenix Lights, Reapers, Oklahomies, Desert Wolves, Ursae Majoris, Drangers, Spartans, and Rigor Tortoise are all battling it out to determine who is the greatest team in North America. The bracket looks as follows based off of day one of seeding. Phoenix Lights will take on Dranger, Spartans versus the Reapers, Desert Wolves versus Oklahomies, Ursa Majoris versus Rigor Tortoise. With all of the initial bracket out of the way and getting ready to head into our first game, if you've never joined us for Jugger before, let's take a moment to talk about the basic rules of play so you know what's happening out there on the field. Jugger is a competitive sport played between two teams. Four enforcers armed with Pomfin and able to defend themselves, and one quick who has nothing and is the only player able to grab the ball in the center, known as the Skull. After a countdown, the players enter the field and face off against each other in the center. The enforcers spar with their Pomfin while the quick fights for control of the Skull. If a player is struck by a Pomfin, they drop for a set amount of time, temporarily taken out of the action. Using a variety of Pomfin, from the spear-like slash or short and shield, to the intimidating chain, an eight-foot ball on a rope, enforcers must work as a team to deal with their opponents while creating an opening for their quick to grab the skull. Once the quick sees an opening, they rush for the skull, and then for the goal, placing the skull inside it and scoring a point for their team. With that rules explanation out of the way, let's get into our first game of the tournament, Dranger versus Phoenix Lights. Dranger were our number eight seed coming into bracket play against the number one seed, Phoenix Lights. Dranger were unable to take a win over the course of the entirety of seeding, whereas Phoenix Lights has gone entirely undefeated the other side of the coin. This brings us to a very one-sided matchup for the Phoenix Lights against the Dranger. We'll see if they can manage to pull off some upset scores, but most likely Dranger are in a very tough position against Phoenix Lights heading into this game. Now you'll notice for the first time we do have audio accompanying our video, meaning you can hear those stones playing in the background. Those stones are there to keep time for downed opponents, as well as to keep time for the game. It is 100 stones per half in this timed match. As both sides hit the line, Phoenix Lights on the left-hand side, Dranger on the right. Once again, Phoenix Lights chain dominant, taking down a double, make that a triple, and that should be an easy walk-in for point number one for the Phoenix Lights. It is indeed. This chain has has been dominant from all of their chain players on Phoenix Lights for the entirety of the tournament, and it shows once again in an easy line collapse as Dranger Falter and Phoenix Lights takes point number one. It seems to be a pretty common issue throughout most of the tournament here. Chain breaking, a big problem for every team, especially going against some of the best teams in the country like Phoenix Lights. Their chains have been dominating some of the better teams in this tournament, and it continues to show. This time around, though, a chain leap by Cerberus. Merking for the Dranger will get them an easy down, and this time around, the line is forming as it needs to. We see everyone kind of going around, getting their pins on the side of the Dranger. We'll see if they can hold it up. Unfortunately, though, Dragon is not notice as the chain sweeps in and we see a line once again collapsing as Hawk moves in taking an easy down. Everyone moves in grabbing their pins and it seems to be pretty close to a full team collapse and pin as I believe that is Ryan moving in there with the skull grabbing it heading in chain once again up on the side of Phoenix Lights and there is very little anyone is going to be able to do anything about it as they try and guide each other in Dranger putting up a valiant defense as Hawk moves in sword and board dueling around the outside it looks like quick will go down before the point is scored I stand corrected Dranger putting up a valiant effort so far on point number two attempting to get a second down there as they move in chain will knock them out once more and there it is point finally scored for Phoenix Lights. That'll put them up 2-0, to zero, but really fantastic effort by the Dranger. Probably a 25-30 stone point right there will stall them out very well, and will keep the game approachable for both teams. Score is 2-0 to zero, heading into this next play. One final reminder, there are no sets for the rest of this tournament. Everything will be played completely timed and in halves. That means scores will always be cumulative over the course of the entire game. Both teams head up to the line as chains kind of 
eke out on both sides. Hawk and Cerberus dueling on the outside. We'll see if anyone can take them down. Looks like there is a bit of a scuffle there near the goal. I'm not sure if they got that one in in time before Dragon slid it in. We are going to be calling the play right here. That'll be 3-0. Phoenix Light's favor just barely got it in before that score was... I stand corrected. It looks like we might actually have a reset here. I see 2-0 on the scoreboard, so that flag may very well have been play affecting. 2-0 once again. I think we are, in fact, redoing the point here. So it'll be 2-0 once again heading into the next play. We see the countdown going down. Both sides rush in. Dragon trying to get deep into the enemy line as Hawk does the same thing on the left-hand side. Chain is going to collapse as both quicks fight it out, and that's a quick charge over there for Phoenix Lights, and they will score an easy third point, bringing it right back up again. That was a brutal blitz from the side of Phoenix Lights, and though the flank was attempted on the other side by the Dranger, Phoenix Lights pushed their way through, easily scoring a third point and bringing us to a very large early lead against the Dranger. Dranger are going to have to form up very quick against the number one seed if they want to prevent this from being a blowout game and sending Dranger straight down into the elimination bracket. As we see both teams rushing in, it looks like Dranger will go for the flick. They will get it after a little while, but the right-hand side is collapsing as the chain once again from Phoenix Lights absolutely destroying. That'll be an easy walk-in once again. This time around, outside on both sides, Phoenix Lights easily maneuver their way around, collapsing on Dranger, and it'll be a walk-in for point number four. Things are not looking all that great for Dranger already. Their outside really needs to form up against those chains if they're going to have any chance of surviving the onslaught of Phoenix Lights. We see both sides giving their ready call here quietly in the background. Dranger very shouty with their entry calls. Phoenix Lights a little more on the subdued side. Once again, Dranger do get the flick early. Chain shot out from Dranger is not going to be good enough as the left and right hand side once again collapse from the outside. Looks like Seabass will come in, try one more Valiant effort, but it will not be enough as Phoenix Lights easily take care of the outside of the entirety of the Dranger line. And once again, they walk it in for a very quick point. This seems to be a continuous pattern for Dranger against the Phoenix Lights. Phoenix Lights are doing spectacular work on the outside, maneuvering and positioning so that they can continue to snowball their efforts. Keep in mind, strategically, just because you win your 1v1 on the outside does not mean you're going to win the point. You have to be able to capitalize on that to force odd-numbered engagements and use that to your advantage. Dranger once again gets Skull Possession, but they're going to be forced to ice it as Hawk moves in he is going to be able to get a double pin right there. Dual shorts are the only Pomfin allowed to pin two combatants at the exact same time. Attempted chain jump by Dranger will not be enough, and Phoenix Lights will put in another point. We do see a flag on the play, but if it's not play affecting, we will not see a redo, as it may very well be 6-0 in favor of Phoenix Lights. Looks like, once again, the scoreboard not updated here, which means we do have another redo point. So far, two play-affecting flags here at the end of each of these plays. It will remain, as far as I can tell, 5-0 in favor of Phoenix Lights, as once again, Dranger are able to get the flick, get the skull possession, and this time around, it looks like Connor is completely free! He's gonna sprint it in, and there it is! A free point score against the number one seed. Dranger will actually manage to get themselves a point on the board against Phoenix Lights, closing the gap to four I am very impressed by that center line play by Dranger they see exactly where they need to find a hole in Phoenix Light's line and maneuver themselves to the goal very quickly that was like a three four stone play and Dranger use it to put themselves on the board it will not be a shutout this time around for Phoenix Lights as we move into the second half five to one you'll see the players have switched sides attempted chain jumps on both teams it looks like Dranger do come out ahead but it doesn't matter as Phoenix Lights are pursuing the goal they do try and get a stop here a uh, honeypot in on the mound will force the Phoenix Lights away and now Dranger are back in possession moving their way around the field. Hawk there to stop on the slash as their chain with a wide berth over the iced skull will put them in control as we see some duels over the center. Chain will take them down as we have a little bit of a wrap there not able to quite get anything as I do believe that chain shot might have gotten Connor down before he can grab the skull and score a point. Dragon trying to come in with the duel but it's not going to be good enough. It looks like Wood on the chain for Phoenix Lights is going to take down another 
Terror as they start to advance up the field. Card is going to move his best in to try and take them down, but I don't think it's going to be good enough as he gets down, and there it is. Score for Phoenix Lights, 6-1 beautiful play there by Phoenix Lights. Though they were on the defensive twice during that play, they moved back with precision. They had coverage on the backfield, and they used that to their advantage to box out Dranger and force them into a position that they could not adapt to. Phoenix Lights widen the gap once again to five points. Now, I would be remiss if I said that Phoenix Lights aren't the most favored to win out of seeding. 7-0 brings them very, very heavily favored in this tournament so far, and they are very much showing their stuff as they move in. Once again, an easy sprint will put them 7-1 up against Dranger. Their line is the stuff of legends as they maneuver as a team. Watch them here as they come in on this play. You'll see them hit as a line and their left and right sides will immediately move in to try and collapse and capitalize while the center holds position. You see right there, Hawk immediately takes them down on the left-hand side. That's a triple, that's a quad, almost a quad. I stand corrected. It looks like he will be stopped just before he can get it, but it doesn't matter. The triple is enough and they're going to score an eighth point. Exactly as I said, outside immediately collapse collapsing center and just like that Phoenix lights are up eight to one any team facing against Phoenix has to deal with that outside chain and their outside flank if they are ever going to stand a chance dragon coming in for quite a dive not sure if it's really going to do anything as the outside once again holds favor for Phoenix lights moving in a little bit more defensively for Dranger this time they are being boxed in by four forced ice to skull down to the edge of the field but I don't know if it's going to matter as everyone goes down right around the same time we can see the Phoenix lights still has wood up as their chain he is circling around keeping two people pinned down now you are allowed to pin with the chain but sometimes that motion is nice for zoning people out I do believe Hawk has at least two pins right there as well as their quick moves up card is going to be there to stop it and force another ice as play is neutralized for a moment wood now moving up here is going to be dueling against card shield block there as he dives to the ground uh, we're going to see an escape attempt right there will go down but sword and board for Dranger is going to get back up trying to fight down against Hawk they they're going to be fighting on the other side. Hawk is going to win out on that dual maneuver over to get pins. Dragon's going to go down before he can get up, and that'll be a walk-in for Phoenix Lights. Nine points to one. Beautiful play there. Really, both sides put up a valiant effort, but Phoenix Lights win their 1v1 duels this time, and that is enough. That's all they need to put themselves up. So it looks like our score tallier has now affected the score back up to 10. So one of those points was, in fact, not redone. I believe it was that second flag call there. So Phoenix Lights are now up 10 to 1 here. Scoreboard has been readjusted later in the game, and we see a very easy walk in this time around. Late in the game, Phoenix Lights managed to put themselves up 11 to 1. That is a 10-point gap against the Dranger, and the Dranger line has fought very hard, but they are not able to sustain it. We can see the countdown here very late in our 100 stones. Once that timer is out, the play ends immediately. There is no last score unless there is a tie game. We can see the ref counting down the final stones as everyone jogs it out. Dragon going for a very quick skull shot, but it's not going to be good enough as Phoenix Lights take the win, the very first win of bracket play of the tournament. Huge congrats to them. They have worked so hard and it has paid off so, so much for them. We can see over and over and over again it is the incredible duelists on their outside exceptional athleticism and very very solid chain play put phoenix lights on a level above so far in this tournament we can see once again incredibly fast chain play here securing them a goal early in the game we can see a little bit later on utilizing the dual pins. Hawk very flexible on the sword and board and dual shorts when he needs to be. The dual pin can be a huge factor in manipulating the state of the game. We can see there where that erroneous flag was laid down. And then here once again, even though Dranger put up some very good duels at various points in the tournament, able to do some very good stuff with maneuvering around pins and things like that. Phoenix Lights are just a truly dominant factor, a force to be reckoned with. With, and we can see that as they take the win here in game number one. So with that being said, Phoenix Lights will move on in the winner's bracket as Dranger will drop down into elimination. One more game.
game, and they are out of contention for the championship. Thank you all so very much for watching this game, and I cannot wait to see you back for more. Once again, I'm Sebastian Seabass Wolf. If you like this content, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and join us for the rest of the bracket tournament here at the Mile High Open 2021. Last but not least, I want to give a special thanks to all of the people who have made this tournament possible at the Colorado Jugger League, including Kalik, Jake, and Miguel. Thank you so much for everything you've done to make this possible. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you next time right here with the Colorado Jugger League.